<laughs> so this is this is it. This is what the noise. And wow, a tree just fell down right over there. Don't know if you heard that. I'm assuming it's a Sasquatch pushed it down. Whoa. <laughs> Ah, oh, it'd be great to take your boots off. Thank you, squirrel. I appreciate that. Hey all, welcome back to what we're up to. So it's early in the morning. Um, I'm on my own today. I decided that I'm gonna try a little bit of a hike. This is the Caesar Creek Perimeter Trail. So it goes all the way around the uh, lake that um, they have here. So it's gonna be the longest hike I've ever done. 12.4 uh, miles is what they say. I wanted to show you what this trail is like. I've wanted to hike it for a while. It might be a little long. Um, I haven't really been training too much for it, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't have the kids and Anne because they are doing school today. Got to take an extra day off. So I packed up. Uh, hopefully I've got plenty of water. I probably overpacked on a few things. The first thing we need to talk about is where I parked. We're actually um, gonna be doing some road uh, walking. There's two spots where you walk on the road. Uh, one is going to be right here. I kind of planned it this way so that I can then on the other side of the lake um, finish on a busier road, hopefully when there's not traffic. Again, it's about 7.30 in the morning, so we'll probably see a few cars, but uh, thanks for coming along to what we're up to. stop whenever I see one of these and actually take pictures of the maps because uh, sometimes my GPS might not be working. I don't have signal on my phone so I like to just have that as a picture. I guess I need to refer to a map and kind of figure out if I'm off trail or not. As you can see it's very foggy this morning. Um, we're going to be walking on the gravel side because of course we're going to have cars coming by. But down there to the right is the lake and the fog is just going right on over the dam. So on the road section, as I said, we're uh, gonna have a little bit of cars. What's nice is it is quiet and kind of secluded out here so you can hear them coming. So um, we're over to the edge of the road, but as always, uh, you gotta be careful when you do this. There they go. Sun has just come up over the trees and it's uh, mid 60s right now. Gonna be low 80s by the time I stop. I brought tons of water, so let's hope uh, it lasts. But um, we're just about ready to get off of the road and go into <laughs> go into uh, by where the visitor center is and get on the trail. And so now we are turning in and there's the visitor center sign. We are done with all of the traffic quick stop at the visitor center to actually grab a paper map because uh, as I like to be prepared, I've got my GPS on my phone, I've got a map on my phone, but if my battery dies, I've got a paper map. Help us get around. Into the woods after passing the visitor center. You can still hear some of the yard equipment. Hopefully for the next hour or two, it's gonna be just me in the woods. You can already hear the cricket sounds overtaking. And here we go, uh, the first divide. Um, so for the perimeter trail, we're looking for the yellow um, blazes. So you'll see some on trees, you'll see some signs. And you can see back here on the tree, there's some yellow blazes, but that'll be what we follow. Here's another one of the tree blazes guiding me on the yellow perimeter trail. Let me talk a little bit about what I have in my pack and spray myself down. Of course I have lunch. I have a long sleeve shirt for the sun. I have um, uh, water, tons of water. I have a uh, bladder that uh, I can drink from throughout the day. And then I brought an Nalgene water bottle. So uh, hopefully that's enough. And then uh, some bug spray. So we're gonna spray up really quick just to make sure that uh, we don't have any tick problems. I got my socks pulled up and everything. So <laughs> hopefully they'll look at me and say, man, you look nice. We don't wanna bite you. We want you to, uh, keep hiking and come back. Saw this along the way. This is a chicken of the woods or hen of the woods. It's a mushroom. Um, I checked it out with the app, the Seek app that we use all the time just to identify and make sure. Um, they say when it's uh, oranges or reddish like this that you're not supposed to eat it, that it's older. Um, you should look for um, more brownish or light uh, tan 
if it's uh, edible. So we're gonna leave this alone. I took a couple pictures because eh, it's cool, right? Look at it just there. Heard a couple fish jump. We're near the lake, of course, and uh, now you can start to hear motorboats as people are getting out and enjoying the lake. We're crossing over a little dried up stream bed. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was raining a lot, so there was probably a lot of rain water around here flowing down. This is probably a good crossing, but I always wanna stop talk about the rocks and the, uh, the fossils you can find in this area. You can even do a fossil dig. Just stop by the visitor center. They'll give you all the details. You do need a permit. You can take some home. That's the lake. I'm gonna hold the phone up. I'm gonna hold the camera up a little bit so you can actually see the lake instead of just the sun glaring off of it. I'm trying to be quiet because there's fishermen and I want them to be able to enjoy nature too. I was hoping we would run into this. Um, I actually, <laughs> this is kind of gross. I actually stepped in it. Um, this is a pawpaw. This is a ripe one with seeds in it. It's a native plant to Ohio, to this area. They have these uh, dark, hard seeds. Um, and then the fruit, it turns kind of yellowish like this. And um, it tastes, uh, huh, tastes like a pear banana mix. I'm um, having them before but it made me stop and look up. And you can see them kind of green, uh, hanging from the branch. They group together like that. Uh, we're not gonna eat any of them. Yeah, I've had them before. Um, I'll leave them for the wildlife. Uh, I brought food to eat and we'll just keep going. I've seen more little toads around here than any other creature. Well, I was not expecting this. We have paved part of this trail. Um, I looked on the map. This is um, an old road for this area. So I can't imagine still driving a car down here, but I guess they need to do trail maintenance so they can get a vehicle down here. But uh, I guess we're going to go along here on the paved portion for a while. Wow. Just a little bit on the paved portion. And then we come down here to the bright <laughs> spot. We are right on the lake. There's even a little sand here. Wow, listen to how quiet it is. Some guys still fishing down there. It's amazing. I checked out the map. This isn't actually not part of the trail. It's a little deviation, but uh, still worth it. Only a few steps down here to see the lake. One thing I wanted to bring was something to wipe all of the sweat away. So even though it's pretty cool, I am still sweating and uh, it's gonna get a little bit hotter. Uh, the other thing is to talk about letting people know where you are because I did uh, send the location of my vehicle when I first started off. I uh, know it was early in the morning. I let uh, Ann know that I was going out and where I was located. Um, if you can send text throughout the time that you're hiking, that's good. Sometimes you don't have signal, um, but we did talk about prearranged places, plans of what would happen if something, uh, you know, if I tripped or you know hurt myself on the trail. Uh, of course, I know the numbers, 911 and other numbers to call here at the um, park. That's another nice thing about picking up a paper map is they usually have the number for the rangers on here uh, in order to get some help if you need it. Let's get back on the trail, hike up this paved path um, get back on the perimeter trail. Look for those yellow markings, those blazes. Well, look what I missed. Right here are the blazes. So I didn't even look down to see them. They're pointing this way. This is the way we're going. We've got this. Showing us go this way now. Wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about blazes and trail markings. So when you go out, you're of course looking for um, your trail. There will usually be a color that it's marked as. So in our case, for the perimeter trail here at Caesar Creek, it's yellow. 
So we're gonna follow those. Um, they paint these blazes on the trees. So as you walk around, you can see them. As you saw, there's some spots where they don't have uh, trees to put them on, so they put them on the road to kind of point the direction. But the orientation of the blaze on the tree tells you which way you're headed. So as you can see, it's right in the middle of the tree. We're going straight. Um, there's another trail that goes along with us. Sometimes you'll see other colors uh, with the other trails that join in and may maybe branch off. So if you get to a tree where it's got two and on this side, it means you're going to take this path or this direction. Um, but usually there's signs when it comes to um, some of the trails it's hard to find, especially if you're like me and you're just walking along or hiking along in a, a state park that's well-traveled, well-marked, they'll have it pretty clear so that um, novices or, you know, just beginners <laughs> can uh, find their way, no problem. But it's a good idea to always keep an eye out for it because as you saw um, in the past bit there, I, I thought, hey, let's check this out. And I walked down the road, it was the wrong way. Good thing I didn't go very far. So some of our other hikes with our boys, which you might've seen, we went seven miles. Wasn't planning on going seven miles, was planning on going more like four, but I took a wrong turn and uh, thought, ah, it's okay, we'll just go down here, turn around and uh, come right back off of this loop. And it turned into seven miles, which <laughs> the boys were happy with me, but you know, it, it was an accomplishment. That's the longest hike uh, with the family that we've been on. So this will be the longest hike I've been on continuously. This is what I think of when I think of m most trails around uh, Southern Ohio is that uh, you do have these long flat stretches where um, not a lot of change in elevation. You're actually walking on packed earth. So you gotta go when it's not too muddy or it hasn't rained a lot. But this is nice, except sometimes it gets a little hot and humid in here. Thought I was out here all alone, but hey, it's the dog warden. I guess there's a lot of dogs out here that need to be caught or I don't know. Maybe you got a call to come out here and get a rabid squirrel that I hope I don't meet along the way. Looks like we had a recent tree fall down this year right across the trail. It's nice as they do pretty good trail maintenance. So they came out and they um, trimmed it up, took all the brush, stacked it off to the side so you can still duck under it. Later, they'll probably come back and saw it up completely and uh, take it away. If you are wanting to avoid people, the north side of this trail is the place to be. Other than that trail runner, I have not seen anybody. Ah, this is something I didn't expect on the trail. We've been in and out so close to all the bushes. I almost fallen down. Here's the blazes, what I talked about before. We're going where they're pointing. This way, so this is the uh, Caesar Creek Perimeter Trail. We're you know halfway done, and I planned it this way on purpose, where all of the quiet, the you know just straight woods part of the hike would be the first thing I do, because on the other side we're gonna have a little more um, things to see, um, some fun stuff, waterfalls, a swinging bridge, things like that that I wanted to kind of end the hike on, so I could find a feel like accomplishment, right? Maybe I'll see some more squirrels. Did see a chipmunk, so I've eh, seen a couple squirrels, chipmunks, but mainly toads. Toads all over the place. Every time I uh, kind of stop and look around, there's a toad hopping away. So I don't know if it's just that time of year. It is uh, mid-September, so the trees, as you can see, the leaves haven't changed yet or are just starting to. It's still nice weather. And wow, a tree. Just fell down right over there. Don't know if you heard that. I'm assuming it's a Sasquatch pushed it down. Huh. A tree falls in the woods. I'm around to hear it. Yeah, it makes a noise. I just spotted through the woods. There's a nice clearing going back out to the lake. So I had to deviate just a little bit. There's a path leading down here. It looks like uh, at some point somebody spent some time out here camping, maybe um, stealth camping or whatever. And it's uh, just nice. Couple of boats, waves coming in. <laughs> Good place to uh, take a quick uh, breather. I uh, get a little stretch. Uh, 
It's about 10.30. Normally if I was home, I would uh, have a snack. I got some honey sticks. I'm gonna try one of these, see if that gives me a, a boost of energy. Oh man. Tastes good. Mmm. Mmm. So good. So yeah, I'm still snacking on honey. Uh, don't judge me too much, but I wanted to stop and show you Osage Orange. I guess I said that right. Uh, looks like monkey brain or anybody's brain. So we made it to the map. It's marked P1. This is actually a boat ramp uh, off of 73, which is the uh, main road driving here on this side of the park. Uh, there are bathrooms. So I wanted to stop, uh, wash up a little bit, uh, just get a little refreshed, put some water on my face. Uh, boat ramps right down here to the lake. Just a few people out putting their uh, boats back um, on the trailers and getting out of here. But this is a great place to just kind of stop. Walk through the parking lot real quick where everybody is parked. We'll look for the trail. We're supposed to go down to the boat ramp here. And uh, it's right here. And then uh, see our way over here to the perimeter trail. Oh, and look, just as I'm talking, Nice little signs, just as I'm talking there. Great. Just walking along. Wow, look at this. Look at those thorns. I believe this is a black locust. They planted them pioneers for hedgerows to keep uh, keep their fences. Put them next to each other and yeah, those are pretty uh, pokey. We've just about made it here. Um, so we deviate, the blue path goes off that way, yellow blazes this way, which is the perimeter trail, of course. And we're going uphill to uh, get up on the road. Here's our trail marker, letting us know, yeah, we gotta go across that. This is it, this is what the noise. Uh, there's lots of shoulder space, as you can see, so no problem walking, but you know, you certainly wanna be careful and you wanna be aware of those things. We walk down over the bridge, down the road a little bit. It's gonna go into the woods. Um, there is actually a little path uh, that starts here on the side of the road. I wasn't sure that it was our trail. So that's uh, gonna lead us back into the woods and away from all the traffic. So, made it. That was a kind of a part that I was nervous about, making sure that there wouldn't be any problems just with traffic and, you know, you never know. People not paying attention or whatever. So here we go, we've got our signs saying trail. If you're following along on a map and wanna know where we are, uh, we are very close to the group campsites. It's an old cemetery here with some old gravestones. Um, Zion Baptist Cemetery. So I don't know anything about this. It'd be good research to look up and find out the history on this area. We are actually at 50 Springs campsite. This is a new little uh, setup here. So gives us a little more information about um, the trail here in this area, as well as um, booking this campsite. So there's nobody here. It's a Friday um, and you can see uh, there's lots of space. But I remember when we camped here before with scouts, that it was kind of weird having people walk through. So just try to be, you know, conscious of it and uh, don't get in anybody's way. Stay off to the side, don't mess with people's tents um, because I know that the uh, trail goes that way. And just from last time we stayed here with scouts, there were people walking. <laughs> Thankfully, not our, all hours of the day, but uh, it gets, uh, gets kind of weird seeing all of a sudden people emerge from the woods and walk through your campsite. We are going to stop real quick for lunch. Um, I'm running a little behind where I wanted to be, so that just simply means I'm just going to eat real quick and go uh, on the trail. Uh, if you can see, it, I've had a little bit of a leak when I've been to replace the camera. The uh, bladder nozzle sometimes leaks on me, so uh, I keep forgetting about that. So I'm not sweating that much, but I just wanted to stop, grab a quick bite. I uh, got some nuts, 
I got a uh, uh, epic meat bar, it's chicken, and I uh, got a Laurel bar. Um, not a lot of carbs, but uh, it'll fuel me, and I'll take just a quick breather. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a little waterfall down here. This will be the first real waterfall that we've seen here on the hike. It's right down here. Sounds so nice. Ah, oh, it'd be great to take your boots off and just, uh, Walking that a little bit. And there's a heron down there. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna flip the camera around. He's sitting on a branch down there. So he's sitting down there. He's right there on the branch. He's just chilling out. It's gonna have me quiet and see how close we can get to him. Blue heron, they have different markings around their face. There's a night heron and another one that looks very similar. I've never been able to get this close to those birds before. <laughs> that was amazing, wasn't it? Uh, just to see it, to get that close. I know it wasn't, it wasn't even close and probably looking in this uh, box here, it seems like it was far away, but it seemed like it was close as I've ever been to one of those birds in the wild. So he's still sitting there. I don't know, maybe it has a nest or <laughs> shouldn't be nesting this time of year. Whoops. Pro tip, watch out for tree roots. Look at me, I'm starting to pick up a thing or two. Markers there. We hit a paved road and there's a marker right there. Tell me which way to go so I don't get lost this time. Lucan's Road was the name of this little paved path. Again, it's just like a road that we saw on the other side. Uh, some of these signs... Um, they're good and they're bad. They let me know that I've just hiked a mile from 50 Springs. However, I've got 0.7 miles to Pioneer Village. So sometimes, depending on if I'm feeling motivated, I'm like, yes, I've done a good job. Or, oh goodness, I can't go another step. It's motivational or not. So, we're back in the woods. It's been pretty quiet. I've seen a couple hikers on this side. It's a little more active than the other side. And uh, no problem though, it's still real quiet, peaceful, and a great hike. We're getting some more traffic. We're getting close um, to uh, the road here on this side. So if you're following along on the map, we're getting close to the Pioneer Village and the Nature Center. Nature Center this way, Perimeter Trail that way. That's the way we're going. But I do recommend if you have time, swing by the Nature Center. Lots of fun stuff to learn about and to see. Well, look at that. Apparently, Crawdad Falls is the name of that little falls area. Perimeter Trail, when I'm on. Sign across the road, saying this way. Um, and down here to the left, Pioneer Village. They have lots of activities here. But here's our little sign on where we're going. Horseshoe Falls. Yay. Here's the village information. Just in case you want to know more. That's the uh, village, at least the side of it. There's so much more to see here. But the perimeter trail goes this way. Look there. Two liters in the bladder, all gone. Um, I'm pretty close to uh, the next section. I've still got a full bottle here, a Nalgene bottle, and this is uh, 32 ounces or 100 milliliters. But it is nice to have a little something off of your pack. I'm gonna shift it around my pack. It keeps all of the bladder stuff right there. I'm gonna move all of this to the back um, since I don't really bladder. Just to give you all a point of reference, we are at C1. We parked at H1 to start off. So we've been all around, across the bridge with the traffic, back into the woods where we stopped for lunch real quick. And now we're back down here, C1. We're getting close, I can't wait. What I like about this part of the hike is I recognize these trails. We've been on them before. Uh, we've taken the boys on them. We went on a hike the first day in January on this trail, so I'm kind of familiar with it. That was a great hike, except for um, Samuel decided he should test out his waterproof boots and just walk in the water. And uh, just nice to see some things that you recognize, know that you're getting close to the end, know that we're getting close to the falls too. So I'm going to do it. Perimeter trail is that way. 
the horseshoe falls is this way it's such a great little feature to see the water everything i mean i know you can see it from the other side of the perimeter trail but you know really cool to see a person maybe walk out in it so let's go this way this is the little creek that runs down horseshoe falls so the falls is right up there I'm not expecting a lot the perimeter trail actually just takes a little wider loop um, so you don't get to come down here joins up at the suspension bridge and then actually walks up there so we'll be able to look back down here at the falls so you could still see the falls if you stay on the perimeter trail but i was hoping for something spectacular to see down here there we go horseshoe falls you can see the horseshoe shape but there's no falls everything's dried up still pretty spectacular you can see some fish swimming down there there's some people enjoying it on the other side let's go see the suspension bridge this thing is just so fun uh, so you can see the suspension cables that it has stretches across it's a little shaky so if it's your first time traveling across it I'm just gonna warn you that uh, I tried to move fast last time and I was like whoa afterwards plus if there's people on it, it gives you vibrations um, so it throws you off a little bit in your balance but the creeks over here again everything's kind of dried up you can see whoa <laughs> so <laughs> there's not a lot of water uh, nothing's really running but uh, this is the bridge. How cool is that? Man, it really swings. I've been at it five hours and 31 minutes. It's, uh, it's after one o'clock, so I was hoping to be done by one, but I uh, didn't quite move as fast as I wanted. So that's okay. It's been a great adventure. Good seeing everything out here and good to have you along. Hey. I haven't mentioned and we do have a youtube channel called what we're up to that we do all kinds of adventures love to have you along for our adventures subscribe that's the easiest way to do it like the video because that tells us that you like this kind of stuff and you want to see more of it and then comment with some of your uh things you like to do or tips for hiking and uh maybe we'll see them in the next videos oh we are now going downhill um there's a little floodplain for uh, overflow of the dam and the lake if it needs to be so we'll see that that's where they do a lot of the fossil hunting after this long hike yeah, it's a pain <laughs> to try to slow yourself down when you're going downhill Whew, oh, i've even uh switched shoulders so i can uh, give my other shoulder a break from carrying the uh backpack back in this last section in the shade we've got some gravel to walk on a nice clear trail we are almost there so excited to be done what a what a great trail to hike on. What a great accomplishment to get it all done. Of course, the last section has to be stairs. But this is it. Parking lot's right up there. Well, that's it. Back at the car. Uh, just under six hours. Um, 27,521 steps. But overall review, great. A um, couple of things. Uh, take some good shoes, of course. Um, ones that are comfortable. Honey sticks. Stop by your local farmer's market. Support your honey uh producers because man that was awesome and then uh i was always start early in the day you don't have to do the whole hike um there's great little hikes out there uh the big thing about the perimeter trail is it did go on the outside so there was that one time i kind of deviated to get close to horseshoe falls that's it thanks for watching um hey uh, check out some of these videos of some of our other hikes and then our hiking playlist. Um, like, subscribe. We'd love to have you along. Thanks for uh, joining us. Hopefully we'll see you on the next adventure of what we're up to.